Hi, I'm Pyrus for Pyrus Gaming, and today we're going to upgrade my laptop and turn it into an editing machine with two easy upgrades. Earlier this year, I made a video. I made this desktop sitting behind me. And it's been wonderful. It's great for video editing. It's great for gaming as well. And honestly, I've had minimal problems with it. I've made a few updates to it since I built the computer, but there is one issue with desktops that just can't be solved by modifications. And that is they don't go anywhere. They just sit there. So while I have enjoyed my time learning on YouTube and, and making my videos, it has taken quite a bit of time. And between that and my normal job, I'm up here for quite a while. So I need an alternative because I own four dogs. So I was trying to think about what I could do. I definitely couldn't afford to go out and buy a brand new PC or a MacBook or anything like that. But I did have a Lenovo Y50-70, which is a gaming laptop I bought, I don't know, six, seven years ago, something to that effect. And at the time it was spec'd out pretty well, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a Core i7. So it is an older laptop, it is an older i7. Um, it does have a mobile GPU in it, which is a 5860M, which isn't amazing, but... It certainly has enough power to do some of the things that I wanted to do editing wise. I started researching the specs. What can I do to upgrade this thing? Um, 16 gigabytes of RAM is apparently all you can do. So I couldn't upgrade the RAM. I couldn't get faster RAM, but I could get a new hard drive. One of the things that slows down the Lenovo Y50-70 is it comes with a hybrid hard drive. So it still uses a spinning disc and can be very slow from time to time. When I boot that thing up, it takes quite a while. And honestly, it is the most frustrating part about using the laptop. So even something as simple as a right click or shutting down the computer can take quite a while. Switching from that to even a modest SSD has shown that it can make a, a pretty big difference in the laptop. So I started clearing off the laptop. I purchased a, a Western Digital Blue one terabyte SAS, two and a half inch SATA SSD. It is much, much faster than the hybrid drive up to 560 megabytes per second. And it was really my only chance at making this thing usable for editing. The other thing that I did when I originally spec'd out the computer is I did not pick the best screen for it. In fact, I that's where I saved the most money on the computer. I went for the cheapest one. So the screen on that laptop is easily washed out, has poor viewing angles, and honestly, is just not pleasant to look at. It's not the type of thing you want to be editing video on. So I found that you can also do a very cheap upgrade for that as well. I was able to find a full 15.6 inch replacement that is full HD 1080p and is gonna be much more vibrant, much better in terms of its display brightness, its contrast and everything else. I have never modified a laptop before, but I figured after doing some research, seeing a few people do it on YouTube, hey, this is probably something I can handle. It's let's give it a shot. For the replacement screen, I paid $58.49. For the replacement hard drive, I paid $64.99 or $69.12 after tax. And the only other thing I had to buy was I had to buy a SATA to USB 3 connector so that I could clone my laptop's hard drive. And that ended up running me $11.49. The replacement screen before tax ended up being $55 on Amazon. So that combined with the hard drive and the cable ended up being about $130. Everything ordered on Amazon, everything came in pretty quickly. And I was up and running within a week for the actual process of opening up the laptop and making the replacement. The SSD was first, so you need to unscrew each of the screws that are underneath the laptop. Uh, the laptop is a little bit awkward to open up because it does have rounded edges and it becomes even more awkward when you're putting the screws back in. The biggest issue I ran into is that there are two little screws that are in the actual hinge of the laptop that both need to be removed or at least loosened. And the one of the two of them came out with a shake. The other one didn't come out at all. So I just kind of had to get it super loose and then pop off came the cover. 
once you're in there, I decided to do a little cleanup because this laptop is very dusty, very dirty. I did not have compressed air. That's probably the best, the safest way to clean out the laptop. So I used a combination of a vacuum cleaner, canister vacuum, so that none of the magnetic parts were anywhere near the laptop. And then I used alcohol swabs along with a microfiber cloth in order to clean and dry out certain areas of the laptop. Once that was all done, there's just a matter of removing the mounts containing the old hard drive. Then I made the mistake of trying to put the new hard drive in, but you actually need to remove the mount from the old hard drive, put that, screw that onto the new one, and then click that one back in. I had seen some videos where they said that there was some tape that was blocking the connector on the back side and you need to be careful not to rip that out, but not in my case. I'm not sure maybe it was too old and it just kind of came out, but the cable just popped right off. I put the mount on mounting bracket on the new hard drive, installed the hard drive by connecting the cable and then screwed it back into the laptop. Now at this point, rather than screw everything back in for the cover, I decided to put the cover over it, flip it over and give it a shot. And what do you know, it booted right up. Now theory, because I already cloned the hard drive, it should just start right up. So at oh, that wow. point, I decided to screw down the bottom cover and it was on to the screen. Now, the screen is a little fidgety. What you wanna do is actually pry up the little side pieces of the framing of the monitor. And basically you go from outside to inside to outside back and forth. You will kind of make a little room, slide it up a little bit. In this case, I used a guitar pick. Then once you hit sort of a stop, you go to the inside, do the same thing, pry it up a little bit, hit another stop, go back to the outside and work your way around. Once you're around the, the top corner, you can go to the other side, loosen it up there, sort of meet in the middle and the whole front face will come off. There are only a few screws that are holding the display into the top framing. You can remove those and off comes the old monitor. Again, lay that flat down onto the keyboard, the keyboard and be careful when removing the adhesive and the connector from the bottom of the display. At that point, you just remove the old monitor once it's disconnected. Take the new monitor, you can lay it flat. The one I ordered came with a front plastic piece which protected it, so it wasn't going to get damaged or scratched. Laid it down on the keyboard so I could connect the cable on the bottom. Then lean it back up against the monitor, replace the screws on the brackets of the display, and test that out as well before snapping everything back into place. Once again, it worked right away. I mean, I guess in theory, it's the same thing as just replacing a monitor on a desktop. You're just plugging in the new one. Uh, but I was happy that everything worked immediately and right away. At that point, you just snap the frame back on the top. There's no kind of configuration or adjustment or anything needed to get it to work. And I was good to go. I was up and running. So I'll show you all a few tests of me booting up the laptop, shutting it down, some of the things that took a long time. It definitely made a big difference with the SSD. And then the other thing that happened was I got to start editing video to test it out on the new SSD. As a, a bit of a curveball, we are now editing this video on the laptop. Now, there's still stuttering and those types of things, but Originally, it was honestly unusable in the state it was in. The original hybrid drive I used from time to time to try and stream, and I would find weird drop frames, poor quality. I would get delays when capturing the footage, and honestly just was not working very well. I didn't even attempt to try and put a video together on DaVinci Resolve. Now with the new so, SSD, uh, yeah. so I was able to take the actual footage from this video, start chopping it up on there, and do a real quick edit to get some things in place. My speed editor connected through Bluetooth. The Lenovo Y50-70 does have Bluetooth. It does have a lot of capabilities when it comes to that stuff. It does, you have a USB 3.0. And honestly, it's worked really well. The other thing is the monitor is so much better. I don't know how well 
it's going to show up in the final video here as far as how washed out the old one was. It's not like it was a low refresh rate or anything. I, I think it was still 60 hertz. Both of them are 60 hertz. But just having that full color palette, the better viewing angles and everything has just made a huge difference in that laptop. All in, was it a smart move? Yeah, I think so, 130 bucks. I mean, you can't get a used iPad for that and you definitely can't edit video or play video games of any real measure on it. Would I recommend doing it to someone who's not that well versed in computers? I would say you'd want some knowledge. Basically, you just don't wanna do silly things like touch something with static electricity. You wanna be really careful when you're undoing the snaps and those types of things, but you're not doing anything more than unscrewing a couple of things, softly prying open some snaps. And the cloning of the hard drive was very easy, but very time consuming. So for cloning the laptop hard drive, I went with the Macrium Reflect 8 free trial. So you get a 30 day free trial when you sign up for it. You don't have to pay anything for it. And I wasn't anticipating cloning another hard drive anytime soon. I did download several programs that claimed that they would let you clone your hard drive, but they required you to upgrade to the full cost before actually doing the cloning. So the Macrium Reflect 8 actually does not. It gives you a full 30 day trial and you can do the clone process very easily. All you're going to do is use the SATA connector to USB 3.0, connect that to your new hard drive and load up the Macrium Reflect program. Once you do that, you will see that there is a display showing your current hard drive and then a little button to the bottom left of it that says clone. You're going to click that. Make sure that you select the hard drive that it's going to go to and then you start the process. It may require a reboot, but if it does, Macrium Reflect will automatically reboot for you and take care of the process. Honestly, I just let it go overnight because I knew that hybrid drive was gonna take quite a while to actually do it, but i happy to say it only took one shot at it. It was cloned by the time I got back to it the following morning and I was good to go to swap it out. Once the new hard drive went into the laptop, it booted right up. It didn't know the difference between the two. And that's exactly what you want because these laptops, they may need drivers for different functions in the laptop that aren't supported anymore, especially when it's a laptop as old as this one. So for me, it worked out perfectly. I booted it up. I didn't have to download any drivers for anything and it was good to go. Uh, before you start the process and taking out the old laptop hard drive, you can see that the two match. I can't guarantee that every laptop will benefit from this, but certainly it's worth looking at if you do own a Lenovo Y50-70 like I do. And I'm sure there are several other laptops that have parts that you can upgrade. When I opened up the laptop, the RAM was right there. That would have been easy to upgrade. I did think about putting fresh thermal paste on to the GPU or the CPU. That's a little more intense and I couldn't find my thermal paste. So I decided maybe later, but you know, wanted to try out the single upgrade first. And I'm sure there are many laptops that will benefit just from a simple memory upgrade one way or the other. But take a look around. If you need a quick mobile answer and you don't want to spend a lot of money, maybe you have something similar to what I do. I've had several laptops in my time, gaming focused, and those tend to have better specs. So they'll sort of hold on to their performance. And maybe it's just one part that has seen a big upgrade like hard drives have since that laptop originally came out. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe for more, especially if you're into gaming. That's primarily what I do here on the channel. Let me know, do you have an old laptop you're looking to upgrade? Have you done this yourself? Are you as surprised that a simple hard drive upgrade has made as much difference as this one has made for me? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you want more content just like this one. Thank you for watching and until next time, I will see you there.